Hey everybody, it's good to see you back once again. So the up armoring of a Caterpillar D2 continues. Yeah, we're just starting the side bracket build for the eventual curved front bumper. There's still mosquitoes in here, I know. But uh, first, there are a couple of comments that keep coming up over and over and over again in the comment section. And instead of typing the answer out 20, 30 times in a row, it's easier just to, another mosquito, it's easier just to answer them right here, right now, very quick. So the first and most common one is, What's leaking? Well, you know how I cover everything ad nauseum and I talk for endless minutes and well, the trade-off is everything I say, I say for a reason, but we should already know what that little oil puddle's coming from if we followed along with the front idler rebuild. But in case we didn't, well, in a nutshell, I explained at the time how this is the early design front idler that does not have oil seals and we use semi-fluid grease because of its flowable properties so when you have grease that flows easily and you put it in a container that is not sealed a certain amount of it will run out so long and the short of it nothing's leaking all that is to be expected you remember how we had like an inch worth of old dried grease on all these idler spokes we cleaned off we're just starting the process over again so if you think that's bad just wait until I start running it. It's gonna start purging out even more. The reason why we have a little bit of a puddle by that one is because when I did the initial fill, I threw a little bit too much in that one. You can see the one, the one on the other side here is still dry, but just wait till we start running this thing around. That one's gonna look just like its brother over here. And that leads right into the next common question I wanted to answer, and that is, have you driven it yet? No, it's not ready to be driven yet because you remember the Starting engine carburetor is attached to the dash panel through this air inlet pipe right here And until the hood is placed on there is no extra reinforcement for this dash that has a lot of spring tension from the governor control Pulling on it and if you drive one of these and start vibrating and shaking everything You're gonna break that carburetor off right at the base. So until we have the hood ready to go on This does not get driven and another reason I haven't driven it it's gonna get full of dirt if I do, and I'm still doing a lot of work down around the tracks and undercarriage and everything. We're gonna be doing a lot of work in here, making and fitting side brackets. Plus, I've got these track frames completely clean and good clean threads with a little bit of grease. I'm not getting any dirt in here until I get all those dirt guards ready to go back on. We can seal all that up. They're still looking like that, so until we can remedy that, those aren't going on either. So. We haven't driven it yet, no. And well, my, okay, my official stance with it is, I'm not five, this isn't Christmas morning and patience is a virtue. Plus I've driven D2s a lot. I already know what it's like. So it, until it's ready, I'm just not gonna drive it. It's pretty easy for me to resist. With that out of the way, back to the build. So what we are going to replicate is this 3F 4737 front bumper group. And as I stated before, I'm shooting for a curved front bumper on this as much for the cool factor as I am for the added protection of these heavy duty side mounting reinforcement brackets. So yeah, with the 20 inch wide track pads on, I think it's gonna be a really good idea to have that extra protection that goes along here. In case we roll one off, we've got cooler lines, we've got oil filter can, We've got all kinds of stuff on each side of the engine, even radiator shell that I don't want to get into. So it's going to be really, really good protection all the way around. Plus, I've already got these three pieces right here. These are leftovers from my grandfather's old D2, number 5J2115. These are the side brackets in question. Now, these were used in conjunction with the front bumper or a super heavy-duty grill guard that went on the front of the radiator or even both. That's why they have all of these holes for mounting different attachments out on the ends. And this right here, these three pieces, gets me most of the way there toward being able to completely rebuild and fabricate from scratch all that stuff and replicate it right down to every last factory detail. These are all in pretty rough condition, okay? You can see how we've got a lot of cracks and there's been a lot of extra welds put on when you look at these threaded holes, most of them, I think these started out as uh, half inch. These are wallowed out, I'd say beyond five eighths. Most of these have just, yeah, they've, they've worn 
completely through. So yeah, and it's also ran loose for so long. You can see how much material's gone back here. So yeah, these holes are wallowed out. They started out as a 3 8 um, Yeah, so they're to the point where I could fix them, but it's probably just as much work or maybe even a little bit less just to build from new. So yeah, we have the two mounting holes at the rear, which utilize these two holes here and here in the bell housing. And then of course we have the four bolt pattern at the front that uses the same mounting as the belly pan. And that leads me to another question that's come up fairly often with the belly pan brackets already on top of the radiator support, is it going to throw off the spacing for these side brackets? And the answer to that is no, because you look at this 5B3819 plate quantity two, goes back there. That's just a 3 8 block plate that stands in for the mounting brackets for the belly pan should a belly pan not be on there. So they need that 3 8 standoff from the radiator support to get everything else to line up in the front. And speaking of things lining up at the front, you cannot use the original one-piece engine side panels in conjunction with these side brackets because of the mounting down here. That is going to be in direct conflict with this kind of artistic looking curved front corner and wow these panels are just pristine uh i <laughs> it i'm from the woods okay and you just don't even see these things on tractors anymore and these are just i mean they've been in the field their whole life they're just perfect but yeah because this area right here curls down protects these cooler lines but roughly lands around the top of the radiator support mounting pad area right there well, the offset of that mounting bracket is, yeah, it's not going to fit. So instead, they used a special two-piece engine side panel. You can also see it in this illustration. So the bottom half is directly behind the side mounting bracket and just sticks up above it a little bit. And then the upper half is actually easily removable. So you still have decent access to each side of the engine without having to remove the bumper and the side brackets and everything. And matter of fact, I had this one piece left. It was the only piece of the four that was still on my grandpa's old D2. And that's simply because somebody took the time to weld a couple of flat washers in the corners where the bolt holes had broken out. So that is for the right side. If we place it up here, you can see where it's got all the bump outs for the oil filter can and for the um, starting engine drain tube. And yeah, um, that's the only one that was left. But because I still have this one and just knowing how deep this one has to be and how long and the, you know, the shape and the contours and everything, by proxy, I know how to shape the bottom half. So that was all the information I needed to be able to recreate the two piece side panels. Um, after that, you know, it's basically it has to have all the same holes and cutouts and everything else as the original one pieces. So between what I have here, I can make all this stuff. It's not a big deal. All it takes is a bunch of steel and I've got that. Throw in some labor and yeah, we can get this figured out. So looking at these, the side brackets are the first pieces I'm going to have to make. We're all three eighths of an inch thick steel all the way down there. But these front mounting plates are all quarter. That's the same thickness as all that leftover scrap that I have from the belly pen build. So we're gonna start by making these. They're all just 90 degree bends, some contours, some holes. Let's just do a quick. Start with a flat square of quarter inch steel. This is 10 and three quarter inches by nine. Then bend it, trim it, and drill it. And finally weld in the support gussets just like the originals and then repeat. So we drilled that hole as long as we're at it. We'll cover that in a bit. Just kind of ignore that for now, but trust me, it needs to be there. So that was pretty simple. There was really no steps in here that you haven't seen me already carry out like when we were doing the belly pan. So that's just the quick overview of that. So phase one complete. Phase two now, the actual side irons themselves. So 
They are three eighths of an inch thick. We already know that. We are 48 and three quarters of an inch long. And at their maximum width up here, four inches. They do taper back to about two and five eighths. They have just kind of a little bit of a tapered point on the front, takes it down, I'd say again, to about two and five eighths, two and three quarter. We'll figure all that out for sure. They're straight four inch back to about here when they start the taper. Top is flat and each one does kind of a swale, kicks out a bit. That's what's going to help it actually go out and clear each side of the radiator shell. So to make those, these were just dropped off today. 3 8 bar stock, 4 inches wide, 6 feet long. So before I even cut anything to length, I am going to put this offset swale into the bar. So it's not much, it's only about a quarter inch to 5 16 offset total and it's a pretty flat angle. It's like 8 degrees. So we already figured all that out with the angle finder. So we have a guide to go by and this first bend starts exactly 10 inches in from that end. So you can see my bend line right there. And we're a little bit long. I left this an inch long, so that's at 11 inches right there. I just want to see how this acts and where everything ends up, and that gives me some working room. I can always chop off an inch long piece of scrap that's going to come in handy for other projects. All right, we're at the old Harbor Freight 20 ton press. You can see I've swapped out the old ram table for the top half of the X231 23 shift fork blank tool that I made. I remember the comment section kind of laughed at me for going to such links and making something that was going to like, you know, interchange under that press ram at the time when I could have just used a couple V-blocks and I told them when you make tools they come in handy later for other things. Enter other things. <laughs> so uh, this is just a piece of heavy half inch angle down here, V-wedge, and it's got a rather sharp point on it and those bends are pretty flat on the old bar. So I'm going to back it up. I just took a piece of uh, like a thin wall pipe or nah, it's not really thin. It's kind of intermediate thickness pipe. We're just going to back it up, blunt that tip a little bit. Should give us a pretty good bend. And this is where the most important part is making sure you're square. Because if you're not square and you bend it, you're gonna have an offset that can'ts up or down. So even if you have to spend five or 10 minutes right here making sure the bar is square to the table, making sure the ram and the adapter is square to the bar and square with the table, that's all very, very, very important. This is where you wanna have it right on and make sure your pressure point is right on your line and centered between the side irons of the table. So get it set right or don't do it at all. Now we check, there's always a little bit of spring back where it'll flatten a little bit more. We need to get a good read on the angle. See if we need to take it and put a little bit more of a bend on it or if we actually have to flatten it back out. So, as you can see, we are a bit sharp. So, it's actually, well, we're learning here. It's actually pretty easy to flatten them back out after you've put an initial bend on it. So we're going to use the press block. That's going to allow that V wedge to cradle into there and it's going to give us a flat surface on the bottom to put pressure back on the bar.
little bit more. All right. Check it with the tension off. We're close, we just need to flatten it a little bit more. So getting it close is easy, getting it right on is difficult. It's all right, we just have patience, take our time. We eventually got it there, so the next eight degree bend has to happen two and a half inches back. We're gonna transition that back out the flat so we get our zigzag swale. And we're set to bend once again. Everything is squared up. A little better view inside. You can see where I've got that half piece of pipe just blunting the tip of the bender. And around back now, I have a piece of half inch round stock right underneath on the uh, the inside of the bend first bend that we did supporting that there because I don't want to if I can get my hand back here be putting too much pressure on the piece that we have already bent that might straighten it back out so by being well supported right at the apex of that bend that's going to keep our angle intact back here and of course I've got this piece of angle iron clamped to the table to provide a backstop for that round rod because as soon as we start bending and that back starts kicking up, it might want to shoot out of there. So that's just keeping everything contained. So that's the setup. Let's crank some more pressure down. Check angle. Alright, it is a while later of course, but the angle ended up being right on, the offset was right on, everything was exactly where I wanted it to be. So we performed all the same steps to the second piece of 3 8 flat bar, and I placed them basically side by side to compare, and I'm really happy with what I'm seeing. Uh, I, got, I got the offset I wanted on both of them, so I set both of the original side brackets up here for comparison. This is the one that's still relatively intact. That's the offset that we replicated because everything still lines up well with the side mounting. You can see how this one has been broken at the weld and pulled away. That's been tweaked out a lot further than it originally was. So this is the one that was the one that we needed to use for pattern. And yeah, those are right where we need them. So we have the offsets done. That was probably the most critical part now Let's start cutting out the rough form. We'll get the taper on the point. We'll get them cut to length, and you can see how we start tapering up at the back here. We need to replicate all those. All right. This is what we have to cut out. Tapers to the front, trim to length.
Okay. With that, we've got our raw blanks formed. Everything is to length, it's bent, it is shaped. We have both of the quarter inch thick side mounting plates done. And I also cut some of these 3 8 blocks back here. Those are basically these. They welded those to the back sides of each one of those side brackets just to give a good double layer to get nice deep threaded holes through. So that's what all these are gonna do on the back side of the main side bracket pieces. And if we go over here, you can see I mocked up one of the original ones to the side of the engine and chassis over here just so you can get a little bit better idea what we are putting together. Anchors down there. Here's where that swell comes into play. Gets us out and around that radiator. So yeah, we've got everything roughed in at this point. Not a bad first day's progress. So I'm also gonna cut the episode right here. Next step is to start figuring out spacing and location for all of the openings in both of these side brackets. Lots of holes to be drilled. We're going to do that tomorrow. Stay tuned, everybody. Thanks for watching.